hello and welcome to the SAP system administration video training system administration also known as basis for people who are experienced in this uh, covers the installation maintenance and the day-to-day -day running of a live SAP implementation in this session we are going to talk about uh, the architecture of uh, an uh, ABAP application server based SAP system and then we'll discuss what is an instance what are processes and what would you need to do on a daily basis uh, while working as a system administrator so this is the system architecture diagram and various possibilities uh, the single tiers landscape is not shown here because that is typically a mainframe processing scenario where all the processing tasks uh, including database application and presentation processes are performed by just one computer two tier is what SAP started with essentially a two tier configuration is implemented using special presentation servers that are responsible only for formatting the graphical interface then SAP has evolved into the well-known R3 which is essentially a three-tier configuration wherein each layer runs on its own hosts and many different application servers can simultaneously work with the data of a database server Moving on to the world of the internet, the three tier has now evolved into a multi-tier system landscape. We'll talk more about the multi-tier landscape in subsequent slides. One of the most important concepts in the uh, SAP system admin is the concept of an instance. So what is an instance? An instance is an admin unit that combines SAP system components providing one or more services. The services provided by an instance are started or stopped together at the same time. You can use a common instance profile to set parameters of all the components of an instance at one go. Also uh, to be noted is that each instance has its own buffer areas. An instance runs on one physical computer but there can be multiple instances on one computer itself usually an instance is identified by the system ID the so-called SID SID and the instance number so for example for this training we are going to be using the IDIS system so this is my IDIS system here and if I go to change item I can see my system number is 02 and this ESA is my system ID these two together determine my instance to which I will log on to during the training for those of you already experienced in system admin you would know that the term SAP instance and application server are often used synonymously so essentially an app server is a SAP instance the central instance of an SAP system is, uh, is a special one because it provides services that no other instance of the system offers so for example for application server ABAP these are uh, these services would be uh, message messaging services and NQ work processes messaging and NQ services are only provided by a central instance we'll uh, study more about the kind of processes and services uh, in subsequent slides so this slide shows us an overview of application server ABAP work processes and services services are essentially used for internal or external communications so for example the message server here 
handles communications between the distributed dispatchers within the ASABAP thereby enabling scalability of several parallel application servers. The message server is configured only once per SAP system as we saw in the previous slide is the central instance that has the ABAP message server. The gateway reader enables communication within SAP systems uh, or it can also enable communication between an SAP system and an external application system. There is only ever one gateway per dispatcher. The Internet Communication Manager also known as ICM enables internet communication uh, between an SAP system and web protocols such as HTTP. The ICM receives requests from the clients and forwards them to the SAP system for processing. And it does a lot of other clever things like uh, it recognizes whether the request is a call for uh, application server ABAP or application server Java and then after deciding it forwards the request accordingly. It can also direct HTTP requests from an SAP system to a web server and send the response back to the SAP system. So these three services are not work processes but services typically provided by a central instance. Then you have this so-called ABAP dispatcher. Uh, it essentially distributes the requests that it gets from the services maybe via through the external world uh, onto different work processes. Now maintenance and setting up of different work processes is one of the key system admin activity. So let's have a close look at some of these. So this is the dialogue work process essentially when a user interacts on a screen or a GUI screen or a web screen it consumes the request goes to a dialogue work process. Every dispatcher requires at least two dialogue work processes. Then you have the spool process which is used for printing. At least one spool work process is required for each SAP system but it's possible to configure more than one depending on your printing requirements. Then you have this update processes. They execute the update requests you need at least one update work process per SAP system but more than one can be configured. Background processes typically used for uh, uh, running bad jobs and uh, l reports that consume a lot of resources uh, and these processes run without any interaction with the user you need at least two background processes for each SAP system but more can be configured. Lock management again uh, we discussed this this is the NQ work process that's why the E here again this work process is only on the central instance like we discussed before. The NQ work process essentially administers the lock table in the shared memory. The lock table contains the logical database locks of the ABAP runtime environment and only one NQ work process is needed per system. So let's look at these processes in the system itself. So I've, I'll, I'll log on to my IDIS. So I log in and if I go to transaction SM50, I can see my various work processes that we've just discussed. So the server that I'm working on has five dialog processes, zero to four, one update, one NQ, and then again one dialog, so that makes it six. 
three background processes one spool and this is a, a different kind of an update process and we'll talk about it later more in the training now me as a user in this session uh, should be represented by a dialogue work process because all user interactions go to a dialogue work process and uh, the mere fact that I have this screen open in front of you means I am consuming one dialogue process so let's see let me highlight this and go back and see yes it's a dialogue process with this internally generated number status running because I'm on the screen and this is the standard program that is generating this screen that you see here this is my client and this is my user ID that I logged on with let us have a look at uh, some of the important transactions that you would be dealing with on a daily basis when you work as a system admin so the first one is SM04 or AL08 SM04 essentially displays all the users logged on to the local instance and uh, various admin functions are possible like logging off a user or displaying an overview of uh, the user's memory consumption etc. So let's have a quick look at this transaction SM04 so on my system that I'm logged on to there's only another user user 09 and user 07 is myself this is my terminal currently I'm not in any transaction on my local server this is the time how many sessions and whether it's GUI background or uh, a web so if I go to this tab I can put, set in a trace in information to find what exactly I'm doing how much memory I'm consuming I can log the user off from either this instance or system-wide and so on and so forth the associated transaction AL08 provides very similar functionality with the difference being you cannot do any editing transaction SM51 displays all instances that are currently active in your SAP system and uh, you can not only access numerous other transactions from here but also execute them for a specific app server that you select so let's have a quick look at SM51 here uh, on the system there is only one server and if I go to server name administration I'll do this again so you can see it clearly on the screen you have various things like you can shut down the server hard shut down soft shut down deactivate or activate trace now you should be able to see it more clearly the different options you have here transaction SM37 provides an overview of background jobs that are either planned or have already been executed and you can select these jobs and see how much time it took to execute and the report that resulted as uh, at the end of the background job etc so let's have a quick look at this transaction SM37 this is my user so let me see all my jobs no job I haven't selected any job but if I put a star here and execute this again let's see what we find might take a couple of seconds for the system to read all the jobs by all the users within this selected set of dates
so here is my result list I can see the different jobs set by different users and the status the start time the end time the duration the delay as in you might uh, kick off the job immediately but it may not actually start immediately because there are no work processes available so there is usually a delay the name of the job the user who created it the next transaction SM50 is what we saw previously it gives you how many work processes you have and which of these are busy so for example if you have uh, 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 too few dialog processes a lot of them would be in the running status and there will not be any in the waiting status which means that if a user logs on uh, and there is no dialog process available he'll just uh, simply uh, be in a waiting status he'll see that circle which means the system is trying to do something but cannot quite so the user has to wait and that would imply you need more dialog processes so this is a very useful transaction for day-to-day -day monitoring of the system and making sure you have enough processes under various categories to cater of all the things the system needs to do and all the users that need to use the system then you have transaction SM12 which is used to monitor lock entries a lock table is normally managed by the NQ work process which is used for locking so that two users cannot make a change on the same table at the same time however in exceptional cases as a system admin you may need to delete a lock entry but that should be done only after careful consideration so looking at the system let me go to transaction SM12 and this is my user so if I try to list the lock entries at the moment there are none but if I were in a different session to open up some customizing so maintain SD condition types and then go back to my original locking session and I run the same thing again I hope to get some locked entries because in this other session I have this open in change change mode so let's give it a go I run my transaction again and here I user 7 is locking several tables and now when I exit my other screen and then run the transaction again refresh this all the locks have disappeared transaction SU01 used for individual user maintenance so this is my transaction SU01 and the same screen that we were on previously so if I look at it I can see different elements of information language mobile phone etc but the most important thing here is the roles and authorization so if I expand this I can see these are the roles I have typically I would not expect the user to have SAP all and SAP new because this pretty much means you can do anything on the system but since this is an ID system I've got these profiles however if you want to do mass maintenance of users multiple users then transaction SU10 is what you need to use transaction SM13 allows you to make sure that the update processes have run smoothly so for example if problems occur they are logged in this transaction and you can analyze them here however one caveat you need to watch that if you use this transaction to view any data the data may be of a sensitive nature for example a salary in increase for the employees of a company uh, then the system will log the fact that you've actually seen the data 
so to be treated with caution and then you have SM51 which is used to analyze various system messages that might be generated due to errors or communication issues with other systems so on and so forth the entries are color coded so you can easily spot the red entries and uh, uh, analyze and fix the errors so we have a quick look at SM21 and this is the kind of output I get so various color coded entries that I can investigate further then you have transaction SM02 which is used for sending system messages for example if there's an important announcement uh, if the system is going down for half an hour you can send a message to all the users on the system that the system is going down and they should save their work or something similar uh, you can also specify uh, an expiry date for a message you can specify whether the message is system wide or for a specific system and so on so for example uh, let us try to create a new system message SM02 we already have this message existing so when somebody logs on they will see this well, let me just create a new message hello world this is going to be issued on anybody on this server and the expiry starts today and expires in a month's time so system message is added now if I go back or do any interaction with the system I get the message hello world issued by this user then we move on to transaction RZ20 Now this essentially is like a monitoring cockpit for the entire system um, it is possible to not only monitor multiple systems by RFC connections but you can also monitor systems with all releases that are still within the maintenance period of SAP you can create your own views uh, that only display the parameters you need for a specific user group and these individual views are also known as monitors the values displayed for the attributes that you are monitoring can be set using threshold values and then a warning can be for example displayed as a yellow or as a problem uh, in color red uh, you can also set automatic reaction uh, so when the threshold specified is reached then a predefined reaction is triggered so let's have a quick look at this RZ20 so this is the kind of output I get to start with now this pretty much covers all the the, the whole system so if I look at SQL uh, server monitor I can see different you can see various parameters like disk free space the growth etc etc so we hope you enjoyed this session and hope to see you again soon thank you